Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, I'm going to try something a bit different. So I've had a lot of requests for me to provide some practice problems alongside my tutorials so that people can practice what they've learned. So that's what I'm going to try to do with these videos. So the plan is that I'll occasionally release a coding problem video alongside a tutorial so that you can practice what you've learned and see my solution. Now, the reason that I'm making these videos separate instead of just adding the coding problem to the tutorial video is because I want to keep the tutorials separate from the problems so that the tutorial videos don't get excessively long. And I also want the problems to be optional. Uh, so for those who feel like you don't need to practice these uh, things that we've learned in the videos, then you can simply skip these coding problem videos. So with that said, let me know what you all think about this new thing that I'm trying out. Uh, I love your all's feedback, and I want to make sure that most of you think that this is going to be beneficial. So I'll definitely monitor the comments and feedback on this video to see if it's something that I want to continue doing. Uh, but with that said, let's go on with the coding problem for this video. So this coding problem is going to be about iterators and iterables. Now, if you haven't watched the tutorial I released on iterators and iterables, then I highly recommend that you watch that video first. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description section below. Uh, so after you've watched that video, then you should have a pretty good understanding of how iterators and iterables work, and also how we can create our own using either a class or a generator. So in this video, let me give you an example problem that you can try to solve. And if you want, you can pause the video before I give you my solutions. So let's say that we want to create a sentence object where we expect a string of words. And when we loop over the sentence, we simply want to loop over the words in the sentence. Now, let's keep it simple and not worry about punctuation or anything like that uh, for the time being. So let's just split the sentence up based on spaces alone. So let's first create a sentence class that does this, and then let's do the same thing by creating a sentence generator function. So for example, uh, for the class, that should look like this. So I can just say my sentence is equal to, and we're going to create this class, and then we can just pass in a simple sentence. And then we can do a for loop that says for word in my sentence, print out the word. Now that should have the following output. It should just loop through and say this is a test. So it just looped through and printed out one word at a time from that sentence. So again, for the coding problem, I would like you to create a class that has this functionality. And then I would also like you to create a generator that has this functionality. Uh, so if you want to pause the video and give that a try, then you can go ahead and do that now. Uh, but with that said, then let me go ahead and show you my solution to this problem. So I'm going to come up to the top here and create this uh, sentence class. So I'll say class sentence. And first I'll create an init method. So I'll say double underscore init. And we want to pass in self for the instance. And then we also want to pass in a sentence. And now we can simply create a class attribute from this. So I'll say self dot sentence is equal to sentence. And now if you remember what I said in the iterators tutorial, an iterator is an object with a state so that it remembers where it is during its iteration. So in order to keep track of where we currently are in our loop, let's add in an index attribute. So I'm going to say self.index is equal to zero. And we'll see how I'm going to use this in just a minute. Okay, and now we also need to have our list of words that we're going to iterate over. So we can get the words from the sentence just by saying, so I'll say self.words is equal to self.sentence.split. Now, if you've never used the split method on a string, basically it splits the string into a list based on a specific delimiter. Uh, by default, it splits the string by spaces, which is what we want in this tutorial. But if you wanted to split the string on some other delimiter, then you could just pass that in as an argument. Okay, and now to make this class iterable, we need to create a dunder iter method. And that method has to return an object that has a dunder next method. So we're going to create the dunder next method on this class itself. So we can simply return self from dunder iter. So I can say dunder underscore iter. Oh, let me uh, fix that there. So we can create an iter method here. And we can simply return self because this class itself is going to have that dunder next method. Okay, and finally we need to create that dunder next method. Now this is what is going to return the next word in the sentence. And if it doesn't have any more words, then we can raise a stop iteration exception. Uh, so we will create this by saying def double underscore next. 
and we will take self as an argument there. And now we need the logic for returning the next word in the sentence. And if there are no more words, then we need to raise a stop iteration exception. So the way I'm going to do this is I'll just say if self.index is greater than or equal to the length of our self.words list, if our index is greater than or equal to the length of that list, then it means that we have looped through all of those values already. So we can simply raise a stop iteration exception. And now, if it doesn't raise that stop iteration, then we want to return the uh, current word of the index that we are on, but we also want to increment the index so that we go to the next word uh, the next time through this next function. Uh, so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to create a temporary var variable here and just say index is equal to self.index. And now we will increment self.index. So I'll say self.index plus equals one. And now we will return self.words. And we want to return uh, the index here that we set to the previous value. Uh, so let me save that. So let me run through this one more time so that it's clear what I'm doing here. Uh, so the first time that we run through this, self.index is going to be equal to zero. So it's going to come in and say if uh, zero is greater than or equal to length of self.words. And if we're using our example down here, then that's going to be four words. So uh, this is not going to be true. So it's not going to raise that stop iteration. And then it's going to say index is equal to self.index, which will set this equal to zero. Then we're going to increment self.index by one. So then self.index will be one. And then we're going to return uh, the self.words at the index of zero, because remember this index is zero. It's only self.index that is now one. So the first time through, this is going to return uh, the zero index of self.words, which will be the first word. The next time through, that self.index is now equal to one because we incremented it. Uh, and then it's just going to keep looping through that, returning the next word until it finally says, uh, our, until our index is higher than the length of our list. And then it's going to raise that stop iteration exception. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so with that class created, uh, we should be able to run the test code that we wrote before, and it should loop over the words in that sentence. Uh, let me make the text just a little smaller here to see if we can fit all this on one screen. Okay, so here's the test code that we had before. We're saying my sentence is equal to a new instance of our sentence class, and we're passing in this sentence of this is a test. And now we're looping over this my sentence variable and printing out those words. And the output, I said should be, uh, you know, the first word, second word, third word, fourth word. So if I run this, then we can see that that worked. It uh, ran through our for loop and printed out the words one at a time. So since we were able to use that in a for loop, it means that our object is iterable. Uh, but it is also an iterator because it has a next method. So if we only wanted one word at a time, then we could just print out uh, the next variable from my sentence. Uh, so if I comment this out, then we can simply say print next, and we will just print out the next value from my sentence. Oops, let me copy that and paste that there. And let me do this a couple of times actually, and run that. And we can see that since we printed out next two times, uh, that it printed out the first two words. Now, if I was to do this five times, there are only four words. So if I did this five times, uh, then we should loop through our entire sentence and then hit a stop iteration exception. So if I run that, then scroll up, then we can see that we loop through the entire sentence. And then this last part here, we hit an error of our stop iteration. Now that's expected because we're trying to get the next value manually. Um, whenever we use a for loop, it catches that stop iteration exception for us and it doesn't show us that. But when we do it manually, we should see that. So that's working as it should. Okay, so now I'm going to comment those out and scroll up a little bit and uncomment out my for loop here. 
Okay, so hopefully you got something working there, even if your solution was a little different than mine. Uh, you probably could have used a try accept block here within the next method as well. Um, as long as you got it working and it was able to loop through with the for loop and then hit that stop iteration exception when you tried to uh, you know, do more than uh, the words that were in the sentence, then that should be a good solution. Okay, so now that we've created a class, let's now try to create a generator function that does the same thing. Now, I actually think that generators are a lot more simple since they take care of the iter and next methods for us. So if you wanna to try to write a generator function that does the same thing as our class, then you can pause the video and do that now. Uh, but with that said, here is my solution to writing this generator. So I'm going to put this right underneath the class here. So let me scroll down a little bit. And now remember, this is going to be a generator function. So we'll do a function with def. And I'm just going to call this sentence with a lowercase s to differentiate it between our class. Now we'll pass in a parameter here of sentence. And for this generator, I'm just going to simply do a loop in here and say for word in sentence dot split. And then I'm going to yield the word. And really for our generator, it should be as simple as that. Uh, so what we're doing here is taking in our sentence and then we are saying for word in sentence dot split. And by default, I said that that splits on a space and that's going to return a list of words. And since we're looping over that, we are just yielding each word one at a time. And when there are no more words to loop over, then it will automatically take care of that stop iteration exception for us. So now let's test this. So instead of using our class sentence here, let's instead use our generator function. So I will lowercase that so that we're now using uh, this generator instead. And now we are looping over uh, my sentence here. So it should print out one word at a time here. So if I run that, then you can see that we get one word at a time. So that's good. Uh, let me comment out that and uncomment our print statements here to make sure that our uh, next functions are still working. So if I save that and run it, then sometimes this runs out of order for some reason in Sublime Text. Uh, but now we can see that it loops through those first four words. And on the fifth word, we get this stop iteration exception. Okay, so it looks like that generator function is working the way that we want it to. Uh, now, I think that those generators are a lot easier to write than these custom classes, but depending on your use case, you might need to know how to do uh, the iter method and the next method on a class as well. Uh, but I find myself using generators a lot more uh, than these iter and next methods just because of how simple they are. Okay, so let me close out of the output there and scroll up here <clears throat> to the top. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this coding problem. Now, if any of you have any different solutions to this problem, then let me know in the comment section below. I'd be interested to see what you came up with. Now, I'll have my code available on GitHub if you'd like to have a look, and I'll leave a link to that in the description section below. And also be sure to let me know what you think about these coding problem videos. And if you'd like to see more of these alongside other tutorials in the future. Uh, other than that, if anyone has any questions about what we covered, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.